In this video, we're going to show that four points actually end up all lie in the same plane. So we're asked to use a strip, the scalar triple product to determine whether the points 1, 3, 2, 3, negative 1, 6, 5, 2, 0, and 3, 6, negative 4 lie in the same plane. So here's the thought process behind that. If we take two vectors, start, we'll start at one point and go to two other ones and make two vectors. In this case, I'm going to say from A to C and then A to D. Okay, those we can check pretty quickly that those two uh, vectors are don't lie in the same line. They're not scalar multiples of each other. So the put the points A, C, and D all determine the same plane. If we take a cross product of those two vectors, then we get a vector that's perpendicular to the plane because it has to be perpendicular to those two vectors. Now, finally, if we take from that same point A and do the vector to B, if I look at the projection of the vector AB onto that cross product, if that projection is zero, that means that that vector AB lands right directly back on top of A if that projection is the zero vector. Or, that means that the point B must have actually been in the plane because the projection of, that, projection of that entire vector lands back on A again. The way we can check to whether or not that the projection is the zero vector is simply to check whether the vector AB is also orthogonal to that cross product. So when we do the dot product and the cross product and put those three vectors in there, that's what we refer to as the scalar triple product. It's a triple product because we have three vectors and it's a scalar because when we do the dot product at the end, we get a number. That's why we call it a scalar triple product. We can do the scalar triple product pretty straightforwardly with a determinant. The vector that we have with the dot product piece is going to be the first row, and then the other two vectors that we have are gonna be the second and the third rows. And again, we got the three vectors by starting at the point A and going to the point B, going to the point C, and going to the point D respectively, and doing the appropriate subtractions. So now that we do the determinant, we can expand along the first row, just like we do when we have the i, j, k, except now we'll use the coefficients of two, negative four, and four, instead of i, j, and k. So the, eliminate the row and column that contain two, we're left with negative one, negative two, three, negative six, so that's why that's the first computation we have to do. Eliminate the row and column containing negative four. We get four, negative two, two, negative six. Multiply that by the negative four. And remember the one in the middle is always a minus. Eliminate the row and column containing the four. We're left with four, negative one, two, three. And so that's our third term that we'll need to compute. Now do your determinants. Six minus a minus six for that one. So that's 12 times two, this will give you 24. Negative 24 minus a minus four, this will give you negative 20. Times a positive four, this will give you negative 80. 12 minus a minus two, so this is 14 times four, will give you 56. So we've got 24 plus 56 is 80, minus the 80 actually gives us zero. Check out the arithmetic there. So since the scalar triple product is zero, that meant that that vector AB really was perpendicular to the, the cross product, or the projection of AB onto the cross product was zero. Either way, B must have been in the plane as well. So we do conclude now that the planes all, or excuse me, the points all lie in the same plane.